Hey everyone, welcome to a, another guide from the WebCrunch ecosphere. Uh, this one's going to be about encrypted credentials in Rails, and it's something that came to Rails, I think, 5.2-ish in that area. I could be wrong, but um, it's a new paradigm that's more or less just trying to solve the problem of sharing like API keys and stuff between like a team or a big hosted network where you don't want to like expose those keys per se, but you want to be able to drop them in an app and make it usable from like the start without needing to really onboard um, something or someone each time you basically either install the app, boot it up, all those things. Um, if you've come before that version, a, a lot of the times there were these things called environment variables used and those would work work fine. You could basically run the app and boot up with this, um, a lot of people would use a, a gym called dot dot env um, basically it just allows you to have a dot file with starts with the period you put like env in it or um, something like of that and don't version control it but then you have your keys in that file it's just like a plain text file almost and you're able to absorb those environment variables in the rails app with the, thanks to like a ruby helper um, mechanism and that worked great but sharing those keys became so cumbersome because that that wasn't version controlled, and of course you don't want to do that. Um, but it ultimately meant that anytime anyone wanted to use the app, they would need to get either permission to access those keys or ask for the keys. And a lot of times, especially if keys update, which they do, that would get just way inconsistent between a team platform. So Rails credentials enter, and it's an encrypted version where you can actually version control the keys, but it's encrypted. So it's not necessarily something, I mean, you could, unless you had a crazy computer with horsepower, you'd be guessing for days kind of to get that key to de decrypt, so to speak. Uh, and the way it works, it's, it's kind of scoped to um, the environment you're working in. So with Rails, there's typically three to start. If you go into your config folder environments, there's tr when you first boot up a default Rails app, there's a test environment, a production environment, and a development environment. Each can have its own set of keys. Um, we'll get to that in this episode, but more or less, we just want to start with the basics where when you first create a new Rails app, assuming it's a newer version, um, it's going to start with this credentials.yml.enc file, which is going to have just scrambled text in it that's essentially encrypted at this point. You can decrypt that file by running a certain command in the console that will essentially decrypt the file and open a new code editor window based on what you use and allow you to edit a file which is based in the yaml format which in the ruby world is pretty common to see for like a key value pair set of data that doesn't need to be stored in a database so to speak so these keys commonly will be like uh, for me stripe api keys um, email service provider keys all those kinds of things that you you need to hook into their api but you don't necessarily want to like you know, host your stuff with them, so to speak. So it's just kind of going through their API. Why would you want to use encrypted enc credentials? Essentially just for the security sake. And these new paradigms that Rails introduced allow you to share them way easier. Um, when you do first boot up the Rails credentials, so I'll say Rails credentials edit is the actual uh, command you run. Let me increase this window a little bit. And it's going to ask me first, okay, what editor to use. And if you don't have one assigned that has like a shorthand, like the, by default, I think DHH uses TextMate, which is pretty old, but he just prefers it. So here's the example there. Um, I use VS Code, so our, our naming convention will be code there. So to run this successfully, which you uh, notice this is like a environment variable in itself. You can set that on your, your bash profile or ZHS, um, ZSH instance if you want to just do this automatically. But for the sake of this guide, I want to show you exactly what I type. So you enter your code editor, maybe it's Sublime. So SBUL is typically that one. Uh, and then run just Rails credentials. Ooh, if I can type edit. This will open up a new window in that code editor since we use a shorthand name of code and not mate in this case. And it, it basically decrypts that file based on this credentials file that's in the, the app already and adds it to your app. And if you notice, there's now a master key file there too. 
And that's going to be like your source of truth. This key, this number is going to be what you want to share with your team in like a password editor uh, or sharing tool and keep it basically not version control. So when you do open that, um, notice in your git ignore, it's going to have that line there because you don't want to version control that ever. So make sure that's there. And that allows you to share just one key between like an entire team as opposed to multiple. So there's no discrepancies. It's always going to be that key, assuming you don't update it. And it allows you to uh, just make things more consistent, of course, with scale. So when you open this key or this file and decrypt it, you actually have just a YAML file basically to start with. And uh, by, by default, it'll have the secret key base. This is used with message verifiers and rails, including the one pro protecting cookies. So the cookies route like auth and all that stuff with rails is used here. Um, and then it gives you an example of like, maybe you'd use AWS for hosting images or something or video or whatever. Uh, and it allows you just to set those keys as an example. So we, again, we use this basically for the scalability sake and just easier use case. When we close this file, notice over in my command line, it's going to say file encrypted and saved. So that essentially re-encrypted this file, like it made a new whole scrambled, you know, number here for it and saved whatever I entered. I didn't enter anything, but I could enter something. So I'll do that in a second just to show you by example, but that's just essentially the default way to use this use case. So why don't we go ahead and just like do that again and I'll add some keys for example's sake. Maybe I'll do some Stripe based uh, fictitious keys. Maybe you're gonna have two pairs of keys with Stripe and it's gonna be a public key. So let's just test public, private, okay. And then I'll save that down. And it did save that. We got a new scrambled letter or uh, number here. If you audit, open it again, you'll see those keys are there and it's just been uh, decrypted. So it's just kind of a on off switch that allows you to get access to that. And to access these particular, like say I wanna get that key, that's where it's pretty useful inside the Rails app. So for the sake of this guide, I'll use the console, but this could be anywhere in your Rails app, you can access these keys. So. Typically, you'd say Rails use the whole namespace of the framework, application, credentials, and then output that. It's going to, if you want to see the whole shebang here, that's it. But it gives you everything in there. Um, but what if you want just one key? So you could up hit the up arrow there and then just say dot uh, stripe. It's going to come back with a hash of those keys. Uh, a common way I prefer to like get keys is to use the dig method in Ruby. And you could just say stripe and just start chaining those things together, assuming they're, they exist. So say we'll get public key just in a, a format like that. And it comes back with the actual key itself. So private in this case. Cool. And that could be, you know, that could be indented to like no, no end basically. So maybe you have, I don't even know, like web hooks. Commonly it's like signing secret, something like that. Let's do something like that, save it down. And if you just, you have to refer to that again, you know, just so um, you remember what it's going to be. But in this case we can say, um, We'll go back to the Stripe and see how that is actually architected. Is it Stripe? Okay, yeah. So Stripe webhooks. That'll you know bounce back with that hash. And then if you want the signing secret, you just chain it in. So signing secret, so on and so forth. It's pretty straightforward, I hope. So that's how you would access it. That could be in your views. That could be in your controllers. All that you just use that global namespace application credentials. And you know, it comes all back with what you need. So that's pretty powerful. And one more thing that's super powerful to me is being able to do this per environment. So if you're, if you're familiar with Stripe at all, um, they, they give you a set of test keys and a set of production keys. So it's commonly kind of tricky to use the same set of keys if you're in your production environment of your Rails app and your development environment. So you wanna use 
the test keys in different areas. So to enable your app to use the test keys in development and then your live keys in production, you need some mechanism to do so. And that's kind of the answer here with Rails credentials, um, application credentials, let's just say, and especially the encrypted ones. So what we do in this case, say I want a, a you know scoped credentials set for the development environment only. We can run our editor equals weight or um, code dash dash weight rails credentials colon edit and then I'm going to pass an environment flag here or option I guess you could call it equals to development now this needs to exist in your app for it to work but you could add like staging you could add I don't even know some crazy different environment you need mobile I don't, I'm not sure but that allows you I think I spelled this wrong in by ornament that allows you to scope it per the environment so in our case I'm going to run this it's going to if you look in the console it's going to create a new credentials file key so we'll have a development key now which you want to save and then append that one to get ignore it also creates a new folder in the app called credentials in the config folder and then inside will be development and this would be the same true if you did the test environment as well so if you run test it's as a different set of keys you could totally do that and in here you, you notice there's no secret key key base it's just the keys in particular so following suit let's do stripe public key test public key development just to show you by example private key all right i'll save that one down it'll encrypt and that's the encrypted file there so now anytime i'm in my rails environment in development mode it's always going to pull from that file instead of this credentials file. This credentials file, in this case, is kind of considered the production file if you want it to be sophisticated like that. You could also run the, the environment and set production so you don't even make use of this default file. Um, up to you how you want to run that. I, I kind of make use of it as my production one since this is kind of the first one that gets created with the app. It's like the source of truth for your keys. So in our case, if we run Rails application credentials, again, we get you know this, this big old mess of stuff, but if we want to dig and get Stripe to come back, we'll get just those sets of keys, but notice it's those two I just entered in development mode. We're not pulling from this file anymore, this credentials root file. It's all from development because if you run rails.env, uh, it's going to come back with development and it's because um, in this environment that's what's the default it's, it's just kind of the default thing that's set in this environment so when you go deploy to production like say Heroku or something um, you'd want to set um, if you if you have rails master key set it's going to be an environment variable you can set up um, to in that environment um, switch over to using that key so so rails env is the um, um, environment variable that's switched automatically once you're in production environment so if when you say you deploy to heroku most people use heroku um, for rails that's going to switch the environment over to production in that case you can set it up to be a different environment but you need to go into your environment variables in heroku and set it up or you can run a configuration um, on the command line allows you Heroku allows you to do that and you can say set you know rails m to whatever if you want to um, the cool thing with this is you can require that master key or whatever key to you know make your app a little more secure and I commonly do this when I do deploy it and what you would want to do at least in your production environment is go into your configuration app so config environments production and I will turn on a, uh, where's it at? Require master key. 
So if you do boot this up, you need to supply your app with an environment variable in that environment. And that's going to like basically give it a passcode to, you know, allow your server to deploy the app and, and render it. And for Heroku's sake, you do something like this. So like Heroku, you could do this in the UI too. So no, no issue if you don't want to do it from the command line. You'd want to pass what app you're going to, of course, use this in. So Rails master key. And then you could actually just cat config master key. Assuming you're in the directory of your app right now. So that's how you could set that up. So if you want to say cat config master key, that would output that key right there. I'm not going to use this key, but you wouldn't want to share that at this point. But that key is going to be responsible, assuming you set this up in your app right here to render the app. And the reason you want to do that, because you don't want to version control your key in your production environment or even have it hosted there. You know, it's kind of um, not ideal in that case, um, because you could, you know, get rooted or, or accessed by some party you don't want. And they could find that key and then just have access to your code base. Pretty much all your API keys, not very safe. So the idea is to use an environment variable to do that. Um, at least that's the convention these days. So that's a quick basic run through of how I use uh, Rails application credentials. At first they were confusing for me, um, but I did get the hang of it once you learned about different environments, I think was an additional feature added later. So you could add um, different keys for your your production environment versus your development environment. It really made things more streamlined. So if you're working with Stripe in particular, those test keys could be in your development and then you have your live keys in production. So every time you deploy your app, you don't have to change anything or worry about your keys being off, people making purchases using real, like live um, payment um, keys, all those things. So it's just like a way less bit of a headache and super useful. So I've never done a guide on this. I use these all the time, but I figured I'd do one. So I hope it was helpful. And if you have any feedback, please let me know. All right. Peace.